Hello, my name is John. I'm one of the instructors. We're going to go over the patient assessment medical and sections. We're going to start off with our scene size up. First, we're going to take our standard precautions. Our standard precautions would include, at minimum, our gloves. We're going to wear eye protection. Other uh, forms of personal protective equipment could include a gown. It can include a mask, uh, an N95 mask. It can also include uh, a hairnet or anything else that you would uh, possibly use during a call. Scene safety. We always want to ensure our scene is safe. Uh, this is going to be for any dangerous events, uh, shooting, stabbing. Obviously make sure that the um, threat has been taken care of by law enforcement. Uh, scene safety is also going to include, is the room too dark? Let's turn on the light. Is it too hot? Let's open a window. Let's get the patient outside. Scene safety is a couple of different aspects, not just the obvious ones of guns and knives, but also is it too hot? Is it a very bad odor inside the room? Let's remove the patient. Let's remove ourselves. For uh, mechanism of injury and nature of illness, <clears throat> what we're going to do here, we're going to look at uh, the type of call. Is it a chest pain? A chest pain typically sounds like a nature of illness, so more of a medical call. A vehicle collision would be a mechanism of injury, how the person was injured. So a gunshot wound, a stabbing, car crash, fall, fights would be a mechanism. We have to determine which it's going to be. Obviously, they can be mixed in together or blended in, but we're going to make a rough uh, assessment of that. Number of patients. How many patients do we have? Typically, commonly, we're only going to have one patient. But obviously, for a motor vehicle accident, for any type of multiple patient incidents, um, food poisoning, maybe the whole household got food poisoning, we're going to look at how many patients that we have. So let's get a head count of how many people we have. Additional resources. Additional resources, commonly we're going to be talking about either the fire department, it could be police department, but don't forget, additional resources could be more ambulances, because we have multiple people. Additional resources could be a tow truck, it could be CHP, because we're on the freeway, it could be a multiple different types of resources. When in doubt, call dispatch, let them know what you have, and they can help you figure it out. And then finally, with scene size up, we're going to talk uh, about consider spine immobilization. Now, in this part, now that I looked at my mechanism of injury, do I need to consider spine immobilization? Remember, all I have to do is assume that the spine could be compromised. As long as I make that quick assumption based on the mechanism of injury, we can go ahead and consider spine immobilization. I'm going to have my partner hold the head in a neutral inline position and tell them not to let go until I can figure out what's going on. At this point, we're only holding the head. We are not applying any C collar, we're not applying any backboards, we're not applying any other devices, just holding the head in a neutral inline position at this time. Manual. Thank you.